All right, let's talk about what seems to be almost everyone's favorite topic, the Tesla bot. So what I'd like to do in this video is to walk through the different kinds of jobs that the Tesla bot could potentially do in the medium to long term. So think about 20 years from now, okay? So that's the kind of timeline I'm setting up for this video. And for the last few days, I've sat down and I try to figure out, okay, based on the bot's form factor, what are those jobs going to be potentially? And I've tried to limit this specifically to the US market, to the United States market, because that's the one I'm most familiar with. I didn't want to use data sets from different countries that might have different sort of restrictions or anything like that. I wanted to focus specifically on the US market for this exercise. And the website I used to try and gather this information is called Career One Stop, which is sponsored by the US Department of Labor. I'll leave a link for that in the description below. There are over 700 types of jobs that are categorized on this website from the US Department of Labor. So instead of trying to sift through over 700 jobs, what I did is I took the first 20 or 30 percent of the list, the ones that have the most jobs from highest to lowest. And there's four primary categories that these jobs seem to be in, plus one additional one, which is actually full self-driving, but I'm also gonna use for this exercise, and I'll walk through my reasoning as we go through the exercise. And these four categories are construction, food, retail, and service. And now let's go ahead and identify the specific jobs within those categories that I've identified. Within the construction category, I identify three primary jobs. These are laborers or material movers. You also have construction laborers, and you also have have landscaping. And so the reason why I picked these jobs is because these jobs seem to have a lot of commonality around the repetitious movement, right? Like the type of movement that you do as a person that's working on a thing. If it's like handling a hammer or some sort of tool or moving material from one place to another or laying material down in a specific manner, there's some commonality, it appears, between these types of jobs. And of course, there's going to be exceptions to this where some jobs are going to require some sort of human expertise to be able to execute on if it's a specific type of landscape job that you want to do or some sort of very specific roof that you want to build, something like that. And if you are in those fields, if you work in those fields, I would love to hear from you in the comments. Do you think that the bot could actually do these jobs? You know, thinking about it from a majority standpoint, like 80% of the jobs or, you know, 70% of the jobs. Or do you think these kinds of jobs are very specialized in nature? I would love to hear your opinion on this. And I would also love to hear from you for the rest of the list as well. If you've worked in those areas, I would love to hear from you if the bot could potentially do those jobs, say 20 years in the future or 10, 15 years in the future. But if we take those three construction jobs, there's roughly 5.2 million jobs today in the United States that are doing those specific tasks. The next major category that I highlighted is food or food service or drink service. So think about restaurants, bars, things like that. And the primary jobs within these categories are fast food workers, waiters and waitresses, food prep, fast food cooks, food attendants or barbacks, and dishwashers. And so the thought process here and onwards is going to be very similar to the construction jobs. Are these jobs repetitive in nature? Can they be replicated from one task to another? In the case of some of these, you could also have an automated solution that is not a bot, right? You could just have a machine or some sort of process. Like in some restaurants, for example, I know there is like you know, you go in and you place the order with a screen and then the food just comes out to you. Somebody brings out the food, right? So like, could that be a potential replacement for like a waiter or a waitress, right? And so the total number of jobs within these specific tasks is roughly 7.6 million jobs. The next category is retail. And for this one, I didn't just pick like say a store or like the number of people that are working at a store. I also picked some of the upstream things that happen. So like for an Amazon, as an example, Amazon is technically retail, but they have warehouse workers, right? They have all these folks upstream that work to bring you the product. In the same way, when you're thinking about a retail store, there's a supply chain that's attached to it, like warehouses and suppliers and logistics companies, you know, trucking and things like that, that bring the product to that store and then you buy it, right? So I try to include as much of the supply chain as humanly possible, but I separate it out anything that's tied to logistics. So anything that's like driver based, because that will have its own category. And so the jobs here are cashier, stockers and order fillers, shipping and receiving inventory, and packers and packagers done by hand. So it would include anything that is already automated or a machine is doing. And so a very similar thought process here, either the bot could act as the thing that automates that process, or it could be automatable in some other way. The one one thing that's interesting to think about is like, for example, as, as a cashier, a lot of us already go to, you know, stores that have self checkout lines, but sometimes you have too much, right? And you just want to go, you want a person to help you, right? I was thinking about this example before where sometimes when the person's trying to scan the thing, right, the barcode, right? 
it sometimes doesn't scan. You know, you have to do a specific way or you have to angle the product a specific way. I'm curious, in the case of a bot with its vision capability, would they even need to scan a barcode if they just pick up the product? They're like, yep, this is the thing. It's $2.99. So literally, they're just, you know, they could potentially just look at the entire line and say, okay, uh, $75.92, right? Just because it sees what the objects are. And it knows, right? It knows what the price for those objects are for that store. If somebody has sort of created a database for that bot, there would still be exceptions for things that need to be weighed potentially. It could theoretically estimate the weight of something just by looking at it, but perhaps for an accuracy standpoint, it probably needs to weigh it. But who knows? Maybe they bake that into the price of the product. And instead of having to weigh everything, it just looks at three onions and it's like, hey, uh, two pounds, right? Or whatever three onions weigh. And then as far as upstream of retail, you think about, you know, pickers, packers, packers handlers, material handlers, things like that. These are very repetitive movements. I'm personally very close to that sort of job since I've worked in supply chain for the last 10 years. And uh, a lot of those jobs could be done by a bot theoretically. You know, if it's just a matter of picking up product from a rack and moving it to the outbound floor, for example, that's something a bot theoretically could either help do. You know, we would have a lot more jobs where the bots are doing it, or unfortunately they could end up replacing those jobs. And so the number of jobs within these roles is roughly 6.9 million. Nice. Then under the service category, which is obviously super broad, but there's two specific ones that are highlighted for this example. We have janitors and cleaners that are non-made as well as made or housekeeping. And so this is where a bot would be able to clean surfaces. They would be able to clean, you know, crevices and other areas. There's going to be some complexity around different houses look differently, but the thought process is, you know, within 10 to 20 years, there should be enough data around the visuals, right? The real world sort of model that the bot's going to build that it sort of recognizes, hey, this is something that I definitely have to clean. And then if if it's dubious about something, it could just go up to the person and say, hey, I, I found this object here. Come with me. Should I clean this? And then the human will say yes or no. Right. And so that would be sort of similar to like a human behavior, you know, when it comes to a, to a human maid or a human housekeeper. But potentially the bot could do that as well. And the number of jobs in this category that I've highlighted is roughly 3.4 million. And then the last category that I highlighted here is not necessarily something the bot would do, but it's along the same lines as the bot. So these would be technically covered by full self-driving. And since full self-driving and the bot are kind of sharing the same fundamental architecture structure of, you know, the machine learning and the data collection and everything like that, I kind of lumped full self-driving in the same category as the bot because they will end up automating these jobs at some point. And so the jobs under this category are truck driver, light trucking, passenger vehicle driver, and industrial truck. And so we don't really have to go into why these jobs would be automated per se, because we all know about full self-driving and how Tesla is working on getting that to level four by this year. And so all you really have to say is, okay, so if we have enough vehicles and trucks out on the road that are full self-driving, theoretically, you would be able to use these instead of having a human driver. And the number of jobs within these four tasks is roughly 4.3 million. And so now that we've covered the and so now that we and so now that and so now that we've covered some of the jobs that we geez what the and now if we take all these jobs together it's roughly 27.5 million jobs and so again just to reiterate if you've worked in these fields or are familiar with these fields please leave a comment below do you think these are legitimate things that could be automated or the bot could do in the next 10 to 20 years or do we think that there's a lot more complexity or things that are within those roles that are going to prevent it to be automated or for the bot to take over. Please, please let me know. And now that we've done the exercise to figure out what kind of jobs the bot could potentially do and the number of roles within those jobs, we should now sit down and figure out, okay, what does this mean for the future, right? One of my concerns for the future is that there won't be enough jobs available for these 27.5 million folks to work in. Now, you could make an argument that theoretically there'll be more jobs available for folks to work in, but I still want to walk through the exercise here with some data to see, is this a possible outcome? Is this a likely outcome? Or do we have to do something fundamental to ensure this is the case? And for this, I'd like to show this chart here, which is the number of jobs in the US per year from 1948 through today. And using this chart, I highlighted specific years to try to understand how many jobs were available. In 1960, there's roughly 62.5 million jobs. In 1974, there were roughly 85 million jobs. 1988, there's roughly 112.5 million jobs. 2002, roughly 135 million 2016 roughly 150 million and 2022 there's roughly 158 million and of course 2022 we have to think about the whole COVID pandemic that happened and on the chart you can see this ridiculous drop in jobs that happened during the COVID pandemic in the U.S. but it seemed to have largely recovered we're not quite at the same levels yet 
but it seems like we're on the path to get there. But the one interesting thing about this data is that there seems to be a slowing in the growth of jobs in the United States. And to try and quantify this slowing of growth, I used a formula called the compound, the compound, compound, my God, <laughs> jeez. And to try and quantify what this compound annual growth rate actually is, or also known as CAGR, which is a weird <laughs> acronym, but I've heard it called CAGR a million times while I was working at the different companies I worked at. We can use this formula to understand what the yearly growth rate on average is from one beginning period and one ending period. And so to apply to this exercise, I took the number of jobs that existed in 2002, and I compare those to the jobs that existed in 1974. So we take those two numbers, we take the ending period divided by the beginning period, and then we take it to the power of one divided by the number of periods, right? The number of years in this case. And so for this specific example, it's 135 million jobs divided by 85 million jobs. And that is taken to the power of one divided by 28 years. And then you minus it by one to try and get to a percentage. And so the annual average growth rate of jobs from 1974 through 2002 was roughly 1.67%. So every year, the number of jobs that existed grew by about 1.67%. Now let's do the same exact exercise from 2002 through 2022. So in 2002, there were 135 million jobs. And then in 2022, I'm gonna give the economy the benefit of the doubt and say that there's going to be roughly 160 million jobs, which is basically at pre-pandemic levels. And so for the formula, 160 million divided by 135 million to the power of one divided by 20 years. So from 2002 to 2022, it's 20 years, gives us an average annual growth rate of 0.85%. And so this is where my concern comes from, is that if we compare the growth rate for the last 20 years versus the growth rate for the previous 28 years, it seems like the growth rate has slowed about 50%. So we've gone from 1.67% jobs created per year on average to roughly 0.85%. And so if we're trying to figure out, okay, in 20 years time, how many new jobs are going to be created based on this trend? I think it's going to be very important to take this growth rate, the slowing growth rate into account. And so if it slowed down about 50% from now versus the previous time frame of 20 years, then we can make a similar assumption that from here to 20 years from now, it could also slow down another 50%. And so we would go from roughly 0.85% growth rate year over year to roughly 0.44% growth rate year over year on average. And so what we do now is essentially take the existing number of 160 million in 2022 and apply a 0.44% growth rate from now until the year 2042, right? So each year we add 0.44% jobs versus the previous year. And so if this trend is accurate, right, if we say this is what's gonna actually happen, which I have no idea if that's the case, but it's a helpful exercise to understand where the economy could trend, where the number of jobs could trend, is that we'll end up with roughly 174 million jobs by the year 2042, if we assume that 0.44% annual growth rate, which means that between the year 2022 and 2042, so by the time we reach 2042, there'll be roughly 14.5 million jobs created. Now, if we take 2022 today, and we really assume that what the US Department of Labor is saying is true, which is we're near or at full employment, then one could assume that between now and then, if those 27.5 million jobs do get replaced by the bot or some sort of automation, you theoretically have a 13 million person gap in the number of jobs available and the number of people that are displaced because of this bot automation. And the way I calculated that is simply by taking the 27.5 million jobs that could theoretically be displaced in the next 20 years by the bot and then compare that to the number of jobs that would be created between 2022 and 2042. And so this is not meant to be a video that says doom and gloom, bot is bad. This is not at all what this video is intended to do. What I'm really trying to do is paint a picture and say, okay, do we think we have the right fundamentals in place? Do we feel like we have the right incentives in place? Do we feel like we have the right things in place as a country to be able to absorb what the bot is going to do? If there's one thing that Tesla has shown is that they execute. They get stuff done. Of course, they're going to be late on some things. Like full self-driving is a perfect example of them being late on it. Cybertruck and a couple other products like the Roadster are also technically late. But Tesla has a track record of saying, if we're going to do this, we're going to get it done, right? And me having worked there can attest to that. I've seen that firsthand. And so if you zoom out long enough, if you go 20 years in the future, you could make an assumption that says whatever Tesla has said today that's going to get done 
it's going to get done in 20 years, right? There's no question about it. And so as a society, especially in the U.S., since this is U.S.-centric data, are we sure that our countrymen, right, in the next 20 years are going to be in a situation where they can find fulfillment, where they can find the job, right? Do we think we're there? Do we have to build more things? Are we thinking about this incorrectly? Am I thinking about this incorrectly? This is the sort of things I think we should be thinking about as a society. And so if there's really any point to this video is to really start a discussion around, hey, are we sure this automation thing that's going to happen with the bot, full self-driving, whatever else is happening, are we sure that we're having the right discussions today, right now, to ensure that the next 20 years are going to be fruitful for everybody and not just a select few. I would love to hear what you think. I think this is a discussion that needs to happen sooner than later. It doesn't matter if the bot or AI or you know whatever automation is 20, 40 years in the future. This is something we have to talk about today. I think the slowing trend and the growth of US jobs is worrisome. And it's something that we should talk about. You know, what are the things that are out there for us to, you know, create so that people can have things they can work on so they can make a living and really follow their passions and follow their goals? I think that's very, very, very important. And so in conclusion, I think the bot's going to be able to do a lot, especially in the next 20 years. But there's going to be specific challenges from a societal perspective that we're going to have to figure out how to solve. But I'm confident that if we have the conversations early enough, if we have them often enough, and again, if we hold our leaders accountable to have those conversations as well, we are really maximizing our chances for a bright future. And I'm really excited to see what that bright future is going to be, but we have to have these conversations. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like what you saw, throw me a like. If you want to see more stuff from me, subscribe. If you'd like to become a patron, I have a link to my Patreon below. You can also join this channel by clicking on the join button right below this video. And I also have a podcast series on this channel, which you can also find on Apple Podcasts. Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.